Hi everybody and welcome to the first of the hardware videos um, in 14, uh, maintaining and installing computer hardware. We'll get going just talking about the main components that you'll find in a computer um, when you're upgrading it, the kind of things you might need to either upgrade or you might need to fix or you might need to have as part of your maintenance stuff. So let's have a look. First of all, so hardware. When you build a computer system, Hardware is key. If you don't have hardware, you don't have any components of your computer, your computer's not going to work at all. Um, whenever you look at a computer specification, it will give you a list of all the hardware that it's got inside it, and that's going to affect the performance of the computer. So we'll show you an example of that now. Um, this is one, a computer on ebuyer.com. If you ever want pictures um, of uh, computer components, or if you want to look up prices of them, if you need to do them on your later assignments, eBuyer is a very good place. It has a lot of good stuff, actually good prices as well, so if you want to buy stuff, it's a good place to buy things from too. Um, and it has plenty of information about all the different bits you're going to buy. So, here we have a computer, and we have some information here about the hardware that it's got in. So, first of all, it says it's an Intel Pentium Dual Core G4400 3.3 GHz. That's the processor, that's the chip that powers the computer, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. It also says it has 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte hard drive, so that's the amount of memory it's got. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little while. Um, and it also says that it has a DVD writer, so we'll talk about that too. Uh, it has Intel HD graphics, so that's part of the graphics card, which we'll also discuss in a bit. Uh, it says it's running Windows 7 or Windows 10 Professional, depending on which you want. And then it talks about the hard drive again down there, so one terabyte hard drive. So, what do all these things mean? First of all, the processor, sometimes called the CPU, sometimes called the chip. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit, so that's the official term, but most people shorten it to this processor or CPU or chip, one or the other. So, what the chip does, it runs everything on the computer. So, whenever you ask a computer to do something, it has a program, it has a set of instructions that it needs to do. The processor is the bit that does all of the instructions. That's the only bit that does it. That does all the working out, all the adding up, all the subtracting, all the any other bits and bobs that your program may ask you to do. That's all done by the processor. Um, it is the brain of the computer, and with a lot of them, for instance, it's called an Intel Core i7. That means it has four cores. Basically, what that means is on this processor, we will have four different processors built into it. So it's one big chunk, but it's got four different processors on it. So it's like having four chips in one. Um, the one we looked at before, where it said it had a dual core, that just has two cores on it. Obviously, two cores is better than one. Four cores is better than two. Eight cores is better than four. But they go up in price as you get bigger. So that's basically what the processor is. Runs all the instructions, integral part of the PC, and is one of the main things that decides how fast your PC is. If you have a fast processor, you should have a fast PC. Next. Okay, so RAM, random access memory. This is the first bit of type of memory that you have on your computer. So this type of RAM is used to hold instructions that the computer is working on at the time. So when you open up a game, like Halo or Battlefield, Call of Duty, Forza, whatever game you may be playing on your PC, what it will do is it will load that game into the RAM. The processor can do many, many, many calculations a second. The thing that slows it down is how fast you can send instructions to the processor. And RAM is very, very fast. So if you use RAM to send the information to the processor, the processor can work at full speed. Um, if you load the whole of your program into RAM, your program will run very quickly. If you run out of RAM, because you only have a certain amount, you might have 8 gigabytes of RAM, or 16 gigabytes of RAM, or 4 gigabytes of RAM, or in a lot of the cases of our computers, 1 or 2 gigabytes of RAM, um, it doesn't take long before it fills up. When it fills up, everything starts to slow down, because it starts to have to use the hard drive instead of the RAM to store the programs on that it's running, and the hard drive is a lot slower. So it can't get the instructions to the processor fast enough. So the processor just sitting around saying, well, yeah, what do you want me to do now? I've got nothing to do. So RAM used for what the computer's working on at the time. 
and it's also what you call volatile memory. That means that as soon as you turn it, the computer off, everything on the RAM gets wiped. Not like your other memory, the non-volatile memory for your hard drive. If you switch the computer off, the mem information's still there. If you have stuff on a memory stick and you unplug the memory stick, the information's still there. But on RAM, it's a lot, lot faster than the other types of memory, but as soon as you turn the power off, it loses all of its memory. But that's not a big problem for what we use it for. Okay, next one. Hard drive. So this is the other type of memory. So this is where you actually store all of the data on your computer, whether it be your own documents, or it's the operating system, or it's other programs that you're running. All of it is going to be stored on the hard drive. So it holds a lot of data. You can easily get many terabyte hard drives now. Um, won't be long before they're on petabytes, which is 1,024 terabytes. Um, but yeah, loads and loads of space put on there. Still quite quick, not as quick as RAM, though, nowhere near as quick as RAM. But the important thing is it's non-volatile memory. So when you turn your computer off, all your information doesn't disappear, because that would be very bad. Um, you can get two different types of hard drive. You can get an HDD, which is one of these, a hard disk drive. You can also get what's called an SSD, which is a solid state drive. It's like having a really big memory stick. So it's like a USB memory stick, but it's a hard drive. Um, they're, not, they're a lot more expensive than hard disk drives, but they are faster and they're more economic. They don't use as much energy. They've got no moving parts, so they're a bit more reliable. But because these have moving parts, all of these disks spin round and it reads stuff with these um, uh, little needles. But when you've got a SSD drive, it's a lot faster. It's also a lot more expensive. So you might have a small SSD drive to run your really important programs and then put all of your main data on a hard drive if you're building your own computer. So, next one. Oh, hello. That's what you get. It's putting links onto your PowerPoint presentations. You okay? Right, there we are. So, let's click over here. Any time now. There we go. Right, so, next one is your motherboard. Motherboard is a very, very, very important part of the machine. This is what everything plugs into. All of these little slots, you plug different things into. For instance, the processor is going to go there. Things like your graphics cards and sound cards are going to go there. Your memory will probably be going into these little blue slots here. So lots of different things. It holds everything. It puts it all together. It also works out the transfer of the data between the different um, components. So if you just have a stick around and a processor, it's no good unless you've got some way of connecting the two together. You plug them both into the motherboard and the motherboard sends the information to and from. So the newer the motherboard, the faster it can send that information across, the faster your processor is and all your computer runs. Um, the other thing that it does is um, as new processors come out, faster RAM comes out, they may not be compatible with your particular motherboard. So your motherboard can limit what you can actually have in your computer. So if you think, oh, I want to upgrade my computer, I want a faster processor, you might also need to buy a new motherboard to do that because your current motherboard might not support the process you've got at the moment. So that's another thing to think about when you're upgrading things. So, next one. Right, optical drives. So these could be CD drives, DVD drives, or Blu-ray drives. All basically do the same thing. It's a little disc that it reads with a laser and you can get information off it. So many of your games will be stored on those. Obviously, films are stored on DVDs and Blu-rays now. Um, if you're not streaming it from the internet. Um, and then you can also use it as a storage device because you can buy these so they can write onto the disc as well. So you can write onto a CD and save a load of information or a DVD or a Blu-ray. Um, and depending on which disc you use, it will depend on how much memory you can store. CD is about 700 megabytes. DVD is about 4.7 gigabytes. Blu-ray is somewhere around 14 gigabytes, might be a bit more, I can't quite remember, but it's a lot. Um, and the different discs will have different capacities. And if you buy a CD drive, that's just a CD drive, it can't run DVDs or Blu-rays. If you buy a DVD drive, it can run CDs and DVDs, but not Blu-rays. And if you buy a Blu-ray drive, it can use everything to do Blu-ray, DVD and CD. So, but they get more expensive as you go up the list. So that's what the, that does. So normally used just for reading information of things that you've bought, so CDs that you've bought or 
DVDs, films that you bought, the um, Blu-rays that have got programs on, whatever you're using it for, it'll read that and you can also use it as a storage device to write onto blank disks and then you can use that to keep your information safe in a different place from your computer so if your computer crashes you've still got the information. Next one. So graphics card. Very important for all the gamers out there to have a graphics card. Um, it sorts out all of the images on the computer so when you're playing a game and you're playing Call of Duty at a big high resolution to make it look nice and sharp and, and realistic and you've got all the graphics set as high as possible so everything looks hyper realistic it's this graphics card or whatever graphics card you have that's going to be working out how to put that on your screen and if it's not powerful enough and you have the settings up high it won't be able to keep drawing that at the speed that you want and your frames per second will drop and that's when you start getting lag and jerkiness in your game so if you're finding that your games are really really slow it could be that you need to upgrade your graphics card might also be the RAM and the processor as well, but graphics card is always a good fix. Um, you will probably, when you have your motherboard, when you buy a motherboard, you'll get a graphics card that's built into it. Um, they're all right for just office work, not going to be very good for gaming. So if you want to do anything decent, you want a separate card. So, uh, but a lot of them come as a separate card like this, and those will be the powerful ones. And things like this, they have their own processor, which is called a GPU, or graphics processing unit, rather than CPU, which is a central processing unit. Uh, and they have their own RAM as well. So they might have 12 gigabytes of RAM just for dealing with graphics, because there's so much work to do. So that's your graphics card. Next one. Sound card. Not quite as common. Um, does the same job as a graphics card, but it just controls the sound instead of the graphics. Um, once again, you'll have one of these on your motherboard. Um, and unless you're a specialist sound user or you want hyper-realistic surround sound in your gaming setup or something like that, you're probably not going to bother to buy a, a sound card. But if you were doing a lot of recording or something like that, then you'd want a specialist sound card to do that. Um, they can also have their own press processor and RAM on, normally not quite as powerful as graphics cards because there's not so much to do. Um, and they will also, as you can see on this one, it's got its own little um, outputs for the different speakers for surround sound. So whereas with a normal graphics card, you might just have one output, just plug some speakers in, you've got your front speakers, you've got your rear speakers, you've got your subs. That's probably an optical output. So you can have, send it to an amplifier and then that can do lovely things and make everything sound wonderful. Uh, so many different things you can be doing with sound cards. As I said, not that common unless you're doing a sound specialist job, but good to know that. So next one, nearly there. So, Heat sink and fan. Right, the processor, which we talked about earlier, produces a massive amount of heat. If you didn't have some way of cooling your processor, your computer would blow up in probably less than a minute. Um, it will overheat, all, everything will melt, all the connections will fuse, and the whole thing will just die. So you need something to keep your CPU cool. And what you normally use is a combination of these two things, a heat sink and a fan. So this is the heat sink and the processor will sit underneath it, so it will clamp on top of the processor. And what it does is all of these are separate little metal fins. So it works a bit like a radiator. You attach it onto there, all the heat gets conducted away, there's loads and loads of surface area, which means that it just gets rid of all the heat and puts it into the air. So it's getting rid of the heat from the processor, it's conducting it away, and it's putting it into the air instead. Obviously, if the air just stays there, the air is gonna heat up, and then the cooling is not really happening anymore. So you also have a fan which blows air down into the heat sink so it blows all the hot air away and keeps replacing it with nice cool stuff. And that means it will keep your processor nice and cool. And then for the last thing that we're going to talk about today, because we've done heat sinks, we've done fans. Um, oh yeah, as I've said on here, a lot of graphics cards, you may have noticed on that last graphics card it had a couple of fans on, they have heat sinks and fans on their processors as well just to keep them cool. And the last bit. Anytime. I'm having problems with my links again. There we go. Go away. Yeah, power supply. So, one more to do. Uh, let's get rid of that. 
So, power supply. This is obviously what supplies power to the computer. So, um, computers take an awful lot of power. Uh, 600 watts is not unusual for a, a computer. Um, but this is what you put in, you plug your power cable into that, plug it into the mains, and then you have all of these different cables that all plug into different parts of the motherboard or different parts of your components to power them. So you might have one that goes to power the motherboard, you might have one that goes to power your graphics card, you might have one that goes to power your CD drive. Lots of different cables all on here, so you can plug in whatever you need to. And like I say, they're rated in watts. So this one is a 650 watts, but it says 650 there. 650 watt power supply. The bigger the wattage, the more it can cope with. And I think now we are on the last one. Yes, we are. So, this is the case, the final thing. So this is what holds everything. You've got to put your compute, all your components in a box, otherwise you'd be electrocuting yourself and people would be hitting things and breaking them and smashing them apart. So we need to have a nice metal box to keep everything safe. So this is our metal box, the case. Um, and you've got different areas, different things fit onto. This big area here is where your motherboard would go. So that will screw in, you've got little holes in here. The motherboard will screw down onto the, the case. Uh, this bay here is probably where your CD drives would go, so if you've got CD drives or DVD drives, they'll go in there. Hard drives will probably go in the bits underneath here, and then there'll be a whole load of slots down the side that your graphics cards and things like that would poke out of. So that's the case, it holds everything, has specific mounting points for all of your different components, and holds everything together. And that is all you need to know, really, about hardware for level 2 in unit 14. Thank you very much.